Conclusion of the book, A Prisoner by No Crime of My Own. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children will walk in truth. John 3, 1, 4. I'm not mad at the cops. They did what they could. While my story is an extreme example of searching for justice, it is very ordinary when it comes to making a case against an abuser. They seem to always win. I know it's a stretch to use the word always, but in a comparative sense, it seems fitting. The number of abusers who walk away uncharged is staggering. Abusers begin their stories with each victim built around lies. Their lies continue as their abuse and grooming grows. Lying is just second nature to them, so they're unaffected when approached by the truth or a lie detector test. Victims come from a very different experience. Even before the abuse emerges, Abusers attempt to blur boundaries of what is appropriate, inappropriate, normal, or abnormal. Then, before long, the predator introduces secrecy to gain cooperation, participation, and your silence. If you want their love, well, better stated, you kind of need their love, then you will do as they say and never betray those secrets. You break every rule that God built inside you. And they're no longer in touch with things as they are. You must deny reality. They are your rule makers, your God. Everything they want from you, you learn to give them. At three, no one has defenses. Then they weaken your God-given fortifications as you grow so they can pluck from you what they want. The essence of innocence is stolen. As the waves came from the oceans of deceivers in my youth, my winds now must blow a torrential storm back in the face of abuse. The worst classification of abuse might be the journey against the winds of our abusers, calling out accusations against us. We're liars. We struggle with mental illness. Ah, this is not a head issue. These are issues of the heart.